Hello, it's Deborah from The Attic and today I've got a project using up old Christmas cards. Very often when I've used Christmas cards for gift tags and things like that in the past I haven't really been very happy with how they've turned out and it's because there are so many different colours and textures and glitterings and, and glitter and stuff on your cards. It's quite difficult to, to draw those together and make them a cohesive thing. And that's one thing that I wanted to do this Christmas. I want to make pockets for a journal and I thought it'd be a really good experiment to, to show how you can make colours work for you if you match one colour grouping with another colour grouping. So that if I was going to use, for example, and this is a hint, <laughs> if I was going to use a khaki coloured cardstock or just a craft coloured cardstock, and if this was a cohesive colour and then these were all add-ons, I think that would work really well. So that's what we're going to do today. Now, to make your life easier, choose Christmas cards from a particular colour grouping. So I've gone with blue, uh, except for this one, which is black and white, but it's just such a funny Christmas card. I want to see if I can do something with it. I don't know that I'll be able to incorporate the, the names, but uh, I just wanted to give it a try. But the other ones are all, uh, they all have strong blue colours to them. This one has got a bit of glitter on it. Maybe you can see on those snowflakes. And I think these are gonna be a really good way of working with one colour and then my craft card stock. My unifying colour for all of these is going to be a piece of, this is craft paper. I've cut it from a roll. It's a roll that I use to um, wrap Christmas presents this year. And I'm going to use this as a base for my pockets. Because we have to start somewhere, I've given myself a range of very rough pockets or envelopes. When I say rough, I mean rough. So this is just very roughly cut on the edge here. This isn't quite right. You can see it better on this one. It's very, very wonky. But it doesn't matter because we're going to deal with all of that as we come to it. So I've given myself a range of different sizes and these can be used as pockets this way or sitting in journals and opening this way or this way. So we're giving ourselves a whole range of options for how we can use our cards because of course it might be that we want to use a card that's got this part of the image in which case you would want an upright card or you might want to just have the owl and the moon in which case you want to have a card that is going to be using that part of the image. So without being too prescriptive at the very start just give yourself some very rough pockets these have just been folded in half and i've given myself a lip to go over the edge i'm not going to give you exact measurements because so much will depend on your cards your projects and your size of journal and also i think it's really boring watching people measure stuff <laughs> this is the card that i'm going to use and this is my folded piece of paper the way i've folded this is in three parts I'm going to make a tuck spot envelope. So I folded this bit here and this is where things will tuck in because I'll make some tags using this card and then this will be the closure. So the idea is that I'll use the, uh, the card to decorate the front of this, probably to do something on here as well. And I'll make sure that it ties in in terms of the colors with all the other ones that I've made, which I will show you uh, when we get to the finish. So there's a number of ways that I can decorate this one. I've got an overlap of maybe about half an inch there. So if I wanted to cut this back, I can. Like I said, there are no measurements in this because it's, it's whatever you feel like and it's what suits the design of your card. So the first thing is I'm going to cut the card in half. And I wanted to show you a way that you could use all parts of the card. I've got some... Uh, I've got two punches and these have got nice uh, sort of branchy thing design things on them. They're very old now. Uh, this is a Tim Holtz one from Sizzix and this is a Martha Stewart one. Uh, neither of them have a name I'm afraid. But this is how you can use all of the card. I'm going to punch a couple of these little branches from this card and I'm also going to use this branch to cut to punch out there we 
there we go that's quite fun but it means that you're using every part of the card as well I'm going to use the card this way up and I want it to go on this folding part this front page so I'm going to draw around it like this That looks nice, so I'm going to cut that out. I'll reserve these little pieces, you never know when you might want to use those again. And I also still have this piece here, which I may use to make uh, tags to go in the tuck spot. But for the moment, this fits right on the front of my, my page there. I'm actually going to cut this down a bit further because I want to add some zigzag stitches that so I'm going to leave myself space at the top, the bottom and this edge and I'm going to stitch that, I'm going to do a zigzag stitch on that and I'm going to do that off camera. There we go, that's been sewn around the outside, sometimes it's easier to show you on the inside. So that's that bit's done and now I want to decide what I'm going to do with this edge. So this is just going to be a tuck spot. So I need a sealed edge here and a sealed edge along the bottom here. I've got this piece of cardboard left over and I'm going to use the same technique that I used with uh, this side and I'm just going to put this flap over the bit of the card that I think I want. So that's going to be there. Let's get that nice picture in there. Or do I want that picture? No, I'm not going to have the picture. I'm going to do it this way. And I don't want to take my picture all the way up to the fold. So I've laid it on there slightly off the fold. You'll see what I mean when I cut this out. Oh, that'll look quite nice, I think. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch this in place. I'm going to use some uh, adhesive just to glue in the centre to hold it where I want it to be on my card. Do I want it that way up or that way up? I think that way up. But I'm, I've only put the adhesive in the centre so that then when I stitch around the edge my needle won't get caught up in the sticky. So I'll go and do my sewing and I'll bring back the results. So I zigzag stitched down this edge. This is why I didn't want the card to go right up to the folding edge because then it would have been difficult to uh, zigzag it onto the uh, brown paper. And then I've sewn this in a plain running stitch and I finished off by sewing it at the bottom. So that way I can tuck things in and they'll be held in there and I can close it. I've got quite a lot of these um, trailing threads. I like trailing threads, but I don't like them quite as long as this. So we're just going to snip these off and make it a little bit neater. And there's one more thing that you could do to, to decorate this. I've got a, a punch that um, cuts out nice wobbly bits of paper. So I'm going to do that as well. Make sure I've got a piece that is about the same size. That'll do and I'll punch out a nice edge. It doesn't matter if you don't have a punch, you could either rip the edge and give it a nice, a nice frayed look like that, or you could rip it down the side of a ruler, that's another way to give it a frayed edge, or you could just keep it as a straight edge. So I'm going to finish it off by cutting out this piece and gluing it onto the back of my booklet pocket pouchy thing. I'll put a line of glue on this side. This is just an ordinary PVA glue. Stick that on there and I'll cut off the excess. So that gives my pockety pouchy thing A nice bit of uh, detailed edging along there and it's just stuck on the back because this would be glued into a journal page and then opened like that. The other thing I want to do is use the branches that I cut 
So let's see where they would go. And this is just random fun. But this is another way of tying your colours together. When I show you everything all together you'll see what I mean. So if you make pockets and tags etc that you want to use in the same project you can give them a couple of colours that will pull everything together even though what you're starting with, this colour card here, might be quite different. Uh, this is one thing you can do. You can um, use little punches of shapes. Uh, didn't need to be white. You could do this in a different colour depending on what you were doing. The other thing that we can do is get a scrap piece of paper and some Distress Oxide ink and a dabber or some kind of applicator and do this and just add a little bit of darkness around these outside edges make it look a little bit more distressed and vintage and just to complete the look I'm going to run the edge of the ink pad down the edge there it makes the, the, the outer edge very dark and that pulls the colours together. I had a piece of card left over. I'm just going to pop this inside the tuck space and see how much I need to chop off it. So probably about that much, just doing everything by eye. That's perfect. And if I want to make it look like a tag, I'll take the shoulders off that. Get my cropper dial and I'll use the largest hole on here to punch a hole in the top. Usefully, this part of the card doesn't have any writing on it. If it did and you wanted to cover it over, just cut out a piece of uh, paper or a piece of card and then uh, glue it on top and then do your cuts. But that will sit in there quite happily. There's another way you can tie colours together, apart from using punches apart from inking around the edges, you could use Nouveau drops. If you have any drops like this or any glitter drops, you can pop these, scatter these around, and then if you've got other pouches that you've made or pockets that you've made from different cards, this is another unifying element. Finally, how am I going to get the best out of holly and ivy? Let's begin by cutting the card down. I'm going to use this to cut the letters off because I want to try and keep everything square and my scissor cutting can be a bit random. Let's see if we can get these names in. Okay, so let's glue the ladies' names on. And I'm going to cut the uh, shoulders off the top of these to make them into tags and I'm going to use an existing tag just to help me get that right. So I'm going to use it to give me a line, there we go, I'll just line up the edge of that tag and it will allow me to draw a line, there we go, and I'll get it probably about right. I'll have the cropper dial in again on the largest hole setting to pop a little hole roughly in the centre. Let's complete this with some thread. There's a tie in the top of the tag. And then they're ready to be used in any other projects. Again, they're uh, blank on the back, but if they weren't, you could cover them with white paper or craft paper and then cut them down. So that's, uh, although these aren't blue and they don't really fit in with the rest of the colours that I've been using, I wanted to show you that um, you can take some elements and make them into tags. I couldn't resist those ladies. Now I want to show you the rest of the different pockets and how they all look as if they have, they've come from the same place. These ladies are a little dazzling under the lights. I I'm going to use Ivy. She's going to be my tag in this here. So let me show you this one first. There we go. So I folded over about in thirds, roughly in thirds, and then I folded this piece over here. So this has just been folded back on itself and I've stitched it down because that gives this edge greater stability. It's less likely to rip when you're popping 
5e into your tag. Then I've cut a rounded edge, then I've taken my card and I've cut it slightly smaller than this edge here. And the way that I got this edge to work was by cutting myself a little template. So this is from a fold of paper, the fold is here, and all I did was draw the shape that I wanted and then I opened the paper out on the fold and I was able to cut around this so that I had a nice rounded edge. I've added the punches in white again and I've also put some little dots of Nouveau on there and I've added vintage photo around the outside edge and that helps it uh, look as if it coordinates with all of the other papers even though they've all used very different uh, cardstock. With this one I've used my edge puncher again to add a little bit of detail down here. This has had vintage photo applied to it. This one is actually going to open like this and this is where the little picture is going to sit so I'm going to use that as a tag again. The, the back I need to cover that over but I can use that as a little uh, tuck thing and I've stitched around the outside edge of this piece of card. Sometimes it's easy to show you on the reverse. So I've stitched around here twice with deliberately wobbly stitching and I've used vintage photo ink to go around the edges of that one again and it has the Nouveau drops in the top. This one is a little bit different. So this was such a pretty picture that I didn't want to lose the whole picture. I wanted to keep this seam. So I cut the page, the, the card, I cut the card down here and I used a tiny little panel on this edge to which I added and stitched the scalloped edge here. I added vintage photo down the edge and then I put the remainder of the card on the front page or the, um, the front of the pocket and I did my stitching here. I folded this piece of cardstock or paper back again and I did a zigzag stitch down there. I added another edge of scalloped paper and stitched it with zigzag stitch and finished it with vintage photo and then I tucked in more of these little white punched cards and the card was punched from the card reverse of uh, that was on this owl. Does that make sense? It was a back page of the owl card, that's what I was trying to say. Um, and it means that when I, when I open it I've got the nice image of the owl in the house and when I close it it completes the whole image but it's broken up with the line of scalloped edge. There's another little punch here and some more Nouveau drops here as well. And that, I think that's probably my favourite. And that will uh, be glued into a journal, just glue it on the back, stick it into a journal page and you've got a nice envelope. And finally of course we have the one that we've just made. That's my four cards that have been used to create four pouches and envelopes and little tuck spots. And I hope you can see that by taking a similar colour group, blue, and using a unifying background for all of these, that's the khaki cardstock, that the, it pulls everything together and it means that they could sit together quite happily in the same journal without clashing. I'm going to say thank you very much for your time, thank you for watching as always. I'm going to leave you with a little bit of music and some close-ups of the items that we've made today and until we meet again, take care.